Ooh, the smell. Wow. Man. Can you smell it? Whole different level of awesomeness. I never thought barbecue chicken would make good tamales, guys, but <laughs> Remember, I'm a newbie at this, so don't, don't judge me. <laughs> he knows how to barbecue. I know how to make tamales. And I know how to eat tamales. Today, I know how to make them, too. <laughs> no, Arnie. What? It's too much meat? It's very... <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I can tell you did that, Masa. Hey barbecue lovers, what's going on? It's Arnie Tex here, and today we're gonna make Texas barbecue tamales. We have brisket, pork, and chicken. I have a very special guest here with us today. This is my wonderful mother. She's just a great all-around mother and an awesome cook herself, and she's been making tamales pretty much most of her adult life. Hi, my name is Josie. Today I'm gonna try to tell Arnie Tex how to make tamales the way that I'm used to making them since day one. Mom, how, how do you actually make them? I mean, do you have like a written down recipe? What is your step-by-step -step process? I don't have a recipe. I don't have measurements or anything like that. What I do is I just do it by feeling and taste. And you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. The first thing that I do myself is I try to get the corn husk uh, soaked because they need to soak a long time, maybe a couple of hours or more if I can because they need to be very soft so that we are able to put the masa on there and then to fold them over. We need to heat that water up a little bit, right? Okay, so we're not gonna boil them. We just want some hot water in there, right? Yes, no, you don't have to boil them. Okay, the next step is the taking the seeds out of the chiles. To add a little pop in there? Yes, so okay. put them into the water and let them boil for about 15 to 20 minutes. I like to put some onion in there to give it a more flavor. I toss a couple of garlics in there and for a little hot right there. All right, so we've got all our chili peppers in here. We have a little bit of onion, some really big uh, garlic as well. Mom, what's the next step after that? We're gonna boil them for 15, 20 minutes and then we're gonna blend them in the blender and then strain it. Okay, the next thing, guys, is to get the masa ready. Mom, I told everybody you were gonna get on your knees and grind that corn with a metate. <laughs> no, that was many years ago. This grandma don't do that. Ah, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> what I do is I melt the lard. I like this brand. This is a good brand. Would you guys like some masa with your lard? <laughs> <laughs> we also, I add a little bit of salt. I'm gonna have to take it a little bit at a time. This is the best chili powder for uh, for the masa. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit and see how it looks. So you don't want it boiling, you just want to melt the fat? Yes, okay. no, of course not, because then I can't work with gotcha. it. Gotcha. Normally mom's used to making big batches of masa because they'll make 30 or 40 dozen at a time and during the tamalada but this is a smaller batch than she's used to working with, so she's still, by experience, is going by feel and taste. and taste. The more you work the masa, the better that the tamales will come out. I'm gonna add a little bit of broth because I wanna make the consistency a little bit softer. Go ahead and put the rest of the lard in there. Gotcha. To test it, you just go like that, and nothing, none, none of the stick. masa comes on the pan, then it's ready. Now originally this video was just gonna be a Texas brisket and pork butt, but I had cooked a bunch of extra chicken a, a couple days ago and vacuum packed it. So we've got the chicken, we've got the tamale maker, we've got the masa, we might as well make some chicken tamales too. So we're just pulling all this chicken apart. I'm gonna give it a quick chop uh, just to make it a little bit finer. It will absorb the flavors, as mom says, a little better, number one. Number two, it also makes it easier to fill the tamales. All right, barbecue lovers, we did the chicken stuff. Now we're gonna move on to brisket. So I'm gonna chop this up, mix it all up. And what I did, I actually separated the point and the flap. Two things, uh, it, it helps it cook a little quicker. And also, we, don't, we didn't need all that extra fat. 
All right, barbecue lovers, we made our chicken for the tamales, we chopped up our brisket, and we're now gonna chop up the pork butt. Basically what I did with the pork butt, I cut it into thirds, and I saved one for tacos. And this was also the exact same ingredients. I used a little bit of salt, pepper, and some Gephardt chili powder, nothing else. Went into the smoker about 300 degrees, 325, no more than that. Took about six hours to cook, approximately. All right, so all of our pork's done, our brisket's done, our chicken's done. We are one step closer to making the most awesome Texas barbecue tamales. Mom, what's the next step here? How are we gonna do this? The next step we're gonna do is I'm gonna put the chili pots in the blender okay. so that we can get it as smooth as we can. Everything that I boiled with it, it's still hot, guys, because it takes a while to get them cool. So you have the chili pods, all the different ones, and the garlic and the onion all going in there. All, all going there, yes. Cool. I don't like to use too much water because I want it all to be more the chili than water, but it, it's gonna need some. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some cominos in there to give it a little bit of uh, smoky flavor. I'm just gonna put it in there. I'm not, I'm not measuring. Oh, so was that a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon? <laughs> it's none of the above. <laughs> I'm gonna put some salt in there. Carne says a little bit here. And we're gonna go ahead and blend. Now guys, we're gonna go ahead and strain the chili wow, and see how good. that looks. Okay. See guys, that's that's the, the, the chili that's straining. All right, Mom, we strained our chili. What are we doing next? The next step is when we're going to put some uh, lard in the pan, and we're going to saute, I guess you can say, the chili for a little bit. And then we're going to add the chicken and let it cook a little bit to absorb the flavors, and then we're ready to make the tamales. And crank it up. Yes, perfect. Ho, ho. Wow. Guys, I've eaten tamales all my life around this lady and I've never actually watched the process or paid attention like I am today. That's pretty, ooh, the smell. See? Wow, man. Can you smell it? Whole different level of awesomeness. Okay, let's put the chicken in here now so we can let it play wow. a little bit. Because I'm gonna put a little bit of broth. I wish the camera had smell-o-vision because Man, if you could smell this, you'd be drooling like I am right now. My mouth's watering, I need a beer. <laughs> I never thought barbecue chicken would make good tamales, guys, but it's real good. <laughs> the hojas have been soaking a long time, so they're nice and soft. Also, you're gonna put your masa on the shiny side, the, the smooth side. Oh, they have a shiny they side. they have a smooth side and they have a rough side. Makes sense. So the next step, is we're going to put the masa. Different people do it different ways. I do it with a cuchara. I like to use the spoon and see, we, you have to leave a little bit of space on this side. A Little bit of space, okay. Then come this way, make it this way. This is how the pros do it. And just go this, like this. So it's not too thick, not too thin, just a nice even coat, it's about as even as you can get it. It depends, a lot of people like them thick. We don't like them very thick. Yeah, we I don't like, like a lot of muscle. more meat than dough. We like more meat than dough. So. Yeah, I'm into that, especially if it's barbecue meat. Yes. <laughs> so in other words, like this is ready. All right, cool. So let's see, Arnie, let me see you do it. All right, let me try making some too. Is that about the right amount or too a much? A little bit more. A little bit more, okay. How am I doing, Mom? Good. So far. You don't have to press too hard. Just, you know, like gentle with your spoon. It takes a little bit of practice. Just, yes. There. Oh, yeah. That made the difference. That little bit of water sure did make a difference. It, it really makes the spoon glide and, and spread yes. much easier. Remember, I'm a newbie at this, so don't, don't judge me. <laughs> He knows how to barbecue, I know how to make tamales. And I know how to eat tamales. <laughs> Today, 
I know how to make them too. You can see I'm a lot messier than my mother. I'm gonna get the hang of this though. I do like to put a lot of meat on them. A lot of people just put like a little bit, but we put a lot because we are meat lovers. So we'd rather eat more meat than masa. You don't put a lot of meat in all of them because depending on the width of the husk. Okay. Because we're putting that cream cheese, remember? I was gonna say, and it depends on how much cheese you might yeah, want in there too. Yeah, they're very thick. Yeah, I would've <laughs> thought you used half of that. We can still cut them thinner if you want. Mm -hmm. Remember. Oh. Away from the scene. Well, let's give it a try. Okay. You do one and I'll do one. <gasps> no, Arnie. What? <laughs> it's too much meat? It's very... <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I can tell you did that, Masa. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to roll it over this way. Uh -huh. Right? Right. Just not not too hard. I'm going to Don't this. take it off. That's okay. No, oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Roll it one more time. Hey, not too bad. No, not too bad. A little bad. extra meat on the end here. Yeah, because you put too much. And then I'm going to fold this away from the seam. Yeah. Hey, check that out. Not bad for a newbie. Maybe you should just stick to barbecuing, Arnie. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a chance. And try to be a little bit more neat. Don't make big, big tamalones. Neat. It's not so hard. You, you're right. It's you're definitely doing it, you folded it wrong. You're, you're Remember, you do it backwards. Oh, okay, this seems something. Yeah, okay. I think I get the hang of this. You're hired. <laughs> now we're gonna do the brisket. So I, w I already showed you how to do it. Let's see if you've learned anything. Try it yourself. I'm a pretty fast learner, you know. Okay, how's that? Good. Should I make it a little flat like that? Okay. Not, not too much, not too much. Just a little bit, okay. Yeah, because you put a lot of meat. You would probably want them to be all about the same size so they can finish cooking at the same time? Yeah, they do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But yours are not going to be the same size. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? You made some fat and some long and some skinny. Well, I'm a newbie. You're forgiven. You're good, Arnie. Not bad. Not bad. I'm a fast learner, I told you. In this case, we don't have the, the steamer thing on the bottom that has all the little holes. So what I'm gonna put is the, some of the leaves on the bottom to keep the tamales from sticking on the bottom. Gotcha. So I'm gonna put this cup like that and we're gonna stack the tamales. And with the fold inside, like that, not out. That way it doesn't open. Okay, yes. great, good yeah. good thinking there. Okay, they're done. I'm gonna cover them with the hojas, and that will create more steam because they should be covered pretty tight. And the hojas will keep the steam in there. You cook them at a, you put hot water, the water's already hot just so that it, they can steam on the bottom. Slowly, so you won't get it on the tamales. Time to cook tamales. There you go, put the lid on. And there you go, turn it on. Fire it up. And it's gonna cook for 45 to an hour. Well, all right, barbecue lovers, our tamales have been steaming for about an hour, más o menos. Hopefully, my tamales are as good as grandma's. Let's check it out, mom. Let's do it. Chicken's always the first one. It's got cheese. We like cheese. Mm -hmm. This is a fat one, so I have a pretty good idea who made this tamal. But look at that, it peels perfect. That's perfect. Oh, wow. wow. Now this is the smoked chicken tamal. Let's see what it tastes like. Split it a little bit. That's right. Mmm. Mm. That is really good. High you, five, Mom. You can taste the, the smoky and the pollo. I can taste the smoky chicken. The cheese just kind of blends it all really well. The masa is very good. 
That's a really, really good tamal, but you know what makes it even better? A little bit of your homemade salsa, mom. I know. That's some good but stuff. But that's right too hot for me. Not for me. I know. Mm hmm. Ooh. Yeah. When Man, the they peel really good. Off, that means that the masa was perfect. Yes. We did a good job with the masa, mom. Very good. Let's see what we got. We always like to eat the masita on the outside. I love to eat that too. Mm -hmm. Always very good. Okay, this is the brisket tamal. Let's see what we have without the salsa first. Very good. Put a brisket. I can taste the brisket. Really good Texas barbecued brisket. Different, guys. Very, very different. I mean, you can taste the brisket, but it's a tamal. If you want to impress some friends during the holidays, and if you're a barbecue cook especially, try a brisket tamal. Wow, very, very good. Now the main course. Now the horse. more traditional tamal meat, historically, has been the pork. This looks like a pork tamal. Let's try it. All right, let's see what we have with this pork. The pork looks really good too. Mmm. Mmm. Right away. This is probably my favorite one of the three, believe it or not. Yes. Even better than the brisket. Also, I can tell that the pork tamal is like a traditional tamal, but you taste that good, smoky, delicious pork, because that is what tamales used to always be originally, mostly, was all pork. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really good. Just a great, great tamal. Just excellent. Really, really good. All right, well, that wraps it up for our Texas barbecue tamal video. Uh, we were very happy with all three of them. At the end of the day, I think our pork tamal was our favorite, but they were all just excellent. Highly recommend that you try them. Uh, if you want to try to make some tamales that will really impress your family and friends, these are the ones you want to try. And I'm going to go ahead and take this last bite, but before that, Mom, I want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your day and teaching me how to make tamales. It's really, really awesome. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you guys a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. Remember to keep the smoke light and make it work. Bam! Guess what? We're eating more tamales. The next day, we had tamales for dinner last night, fresh out of the pot. But we also wanted to show you guys another really cool way to reheat tamales. They wouldn't be barbecue tamales unless we reheat them on the PK grill here. Or any grill really would work, but we're using the PK tonight. We want to get them nice and hot. We put a little toasty, a little roasty toasty. Whoo, I can hear a little sizzle there. Let's go ahead and flip them over and see what they're looking like. Look at that. Nice, pretty little char on the leaf, on the husk. These are looking real good. You ought to smell them, man. God, they smell so good. We're gonna give them another couple of minutes and uh, come back and flip them one more time. And then we're gonna cut into them. They'll be nice and hot and toasty by then. There we go. Look at that beautiful color. Nice little char on the uh, husk. And they're smelling really, really good. Really amazing. So we're gonna let those rest about one minute and then we're gonna start cutting into them. All right, my friends, let's go ahead and pull one of these out and unwrap it. But you see here, you see how this um, masa right here is nice and crunchy. You can probably hear that little crackle. Mm -hmm. This is some of the best eating that you're ever gonna have, man, if you're talking about tamales. That was just amazing. Really, really good stuff. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put me a little bit of santaba on here. A little habanero based sauce that I really, really like for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm gonna cut this dude right here. This looks like it's one of my pork tamales. And put my little crunchy there. And just take me a nice big old bite. Ooh, hot. The flavors, man, the flavors. I mean, these things are awesome when they're fresh off the pot, when they're fresh out of the steam, they're amazing. But right now, with that little char, with the masa getting nice and crispy and toasty like that, it's a Maillard effect, a Maillard reaction, if you want to call it that. 
and it just really kicks all the flavors up to a whole other level, number one. Number two, there's an extra little smoky coming out of the charcoal there in the grill that gives an extra little taste to the masa, not just on the inside with the meat. Now we have another little smoky that's in the masa also, and they're nice and toasty. It just really kicks it up into the stratosphere flavor-wise. I mean, guys, if you've never tried barbecue tamales or tamales on the grill, just plain old tamales on the grill, I really recommend that you try You should get yourself a little fire going, go get you a dozen of tamales and put them on the grill, toast them. Oh my gosh, you're gonna be so, so amazed at how great they are. Blows your mind. All right, barbecue lovers, this is Arnie Tex checking out with our barbecue tamales out on the grill, roasty toasty, reheat. Wanna thank you guys for watching. Keep the smoke light, make it work. Bam! Now let me eat this tamal. Cause it's good. Whoop, whoop. Ching with this. I didn't eat all of mine because it's late and I'm older, so I wanna keep it light. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I might be able to get a hold of that. I used to roll some fat ones when I was younger. Edit that out. <laughs> and then you used to see flying, flying objects outside. <laughs> After I, yeah, that is true. <laughs> There's a UFO right there. There's a UFO. You remember that, Mom? Of course I do. Oh my gosh. But I didn't know why he was seeing UFOs. I thought he was just a scaredy cat. <laughs>